let's because uh, I got some questions for you, some from some fans. So I'm oh. gonna let's shoot those out. <laughs> Make some people happy. Yeah. This this question I've seen you answer before, but since people are asking, um, <laughs> what musical groups have been your biggest influences? Uh, the main three that I love the most are Marillion, Do you remember? Tool, and Led Zeppelin. And there is also a lot of bands that like uh, I discover on a monthly basis that I haven't heard before that also influence me in one way or another. So I would say anything from, I don't know, the Beatles to Death Grips, <laughs> from Shade to Ministry, something like this. Yeah. I listen to a lot of stuff. And what would, what would be your most recent discovery? The Police. Really? Yeah, actually, I was recommended to listen to them by our bass player, Sergei. And uh, because he heard uh, me listening to Rush, no fight, he's like, this is what? This is the police, right? And I'm like, no, this is Rush. And he's like, okay, you need to listen to police then because you're going to like it. Both Neil Peart from Rush and Stuart Copeland from The Police, they're terrific drummers. Yeah. They're amazing drummers. Yeah. So, yeah, this is my like latest discovery and they sound really fresh and really progressive. <laughs> this one is funny, from David Brand. Mm -hmm. He says, if Jesus had smoked weed, how much different, how different a religion would Christianity be? This is sometimes pretty funny when people take this literally, and especially when people ask about the name of the band, this is like my least favorite question. Each time I see like you know, the interview starting with this question, I'm like, okay, here we go again. Somebody didn't do his homework. <laughs> yeah, it is a really good name, though, I have to say. It is a good Thank name. You. Thank yeah. you, yeah. And uh, first it was Stone Jesus from the Outer Space. <laughs> but I would say, like, if I have to think about that very literally, I think Jesus as a figure was quite a... Yeah, he was a superpower dude. 100%. Yeah, he was really chill and peaceful dude. And I'm pretty sure he smoked some. I mean, his followers, uh, yeah, they messed up. But yeah. <laughs> that was legit. He was legit. That's probably why the Romans came after him. They're like, you smoke too much weed, man. <laughs>where do you live in the Ukraine? I'm assuming that's Kiev. Yeah, the, me and Sergei live in Kiev and uh, our new drummer Dima, he lives in Kharkov. Just so something that I forgot to ask earlier, but I was wondering that mm -hmm. you guys started touring pretty quickly in obviously in the Ukraine, but also in Russia. The last show that we played in Russia was uh, December 2013. Uh, there were no casualties yet. It was just, you know, peaceful protest. But after that, when the whole thing turned to a really ugly side and this whole conflict, like war, began, you know, we made a conscious decision not to play in Russia and we haven't played there since. I know that there are a lot of people in Russia who just really want to hear us play, they really like our music. There are a lot of friends that are still there and we haven't seen them in five years, in four years. I mean, I've seen some things that were done to Ukrainian bands in Russia. Like, they were deported, they were arrested, there were some like crazy things going on. And I don't want to risk this with my own band. You, you cannot predict those things, you cannot um, no. save from this kind of stuff. So yeah, we haven't played in Russia for uh, four and a half years already. for a Ukrainian band to tour Europe or overseas? This is basically uh, logistics. Like if you're a band from Germany, you basically just jump into in, in the van and you drive. <laughs> and for us, it usually means that we need to jump on a plane. But otherwise, I don't think that we face really some uh, troubles that uh, any other band from any other country wouldn't. I mean, especially with the U.S., when I learned about all these visas that you need to get, I was thinking that, yeah, this is only happening to us, but no, like, 
every every other citizen or every other country need to face this as well. You need to fill a lot of papers and come through like you know nine circles of bureaucratic hell. So yeah, but we're looking forward to it. <laughs> Maybe next year we'll do it. Yeah. Okay, so let's see the I'm the mountain <laughs> questions. Okay. I'm the mountain rising high. You know, the first thing that always comes up is I'm the mountain, I'm the mountain, I'm the mountain. People are like, they so associate you guys with that song. That's even stranger to us because when we were, uh, when I was writing it and I showed it to the guys and we spent like the whole month working on it. And it's basically a prog rock song. It's really long with a lot of, you know, transitions yeah. and movements and with weird time signatures. And some parts just scream tool. Yeah. <laughs> it's like it, it's, it's on the verge of blatant plagiarism, I think. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the first time that we played it, I was like, yeah, I think this is also the last time that we played it because nobody wants to listen to a 13 minute long prog song on a stoner rock show. But about like, a mountain. <laughs> what, what, what do you know? Like you know, this is some. Th there are some things that you never can predict, and now we have this whopping 10 million views on it on YouTube. If I would know how this works, <laughs> I would do this to all of our songs. Of course, all of our songs would have like 10 million views. You know, yeah. but yeah, this is this is something that I consciously try to uh, avoid. You know, I'm not I'm not gonna write I'm the mountain too. Or I am the river, or something like this. Mm -hmm. We already have this cool song. Why should we, you know, repeat ourselves again? We, we better challenge ourselves for something new. And we never gonna stop. What inspired you to write it? There, there are some uh, inspirations, basically from frog rock world. There were some epics like. Uh, Genesis, 20 minute long, supper's ready. Then there were these guys, Porcupine Tree, mm -hmm. and they have this little song called Arriving Somewhere. And like know. this one especially inspired me to ride on the mountain. Did you ever imagine the last thing you'd hear as you out? song. And then uh, there is a band called uh, Fate's Warning with a song called Still Remains. Then there is a Polish band called Riverside uh, with an epic song called Second Life Syndrome. Like huge songs, 10, 12 minute songs with some crescendo, some culmination that was preceded by some, you know, really cool textures and stuff. And I was thinking that, all right, I want myself uh, a song like this. I just want to write something like this that would uh, get my ambition out, you know, and that would also be uh, melodic and catchy enough because I'm a sucker for melodies. Again, this guy, this guy is my god, you know. <laughs> Lyric-wise, I think I have this idea of, you know, being the mountain, of course, not literally, but being the unstoppable force, something that is so solid that no unstoppable force can move it. Yeah, and but you're also open to changes, and this is sort of a coming of age song, in a sense. When I listen to uh, I'm the Mountain, it reminds me a little bit of that poem. It's more of a thing that people actually read at funerals, where like, <laughs> I'm, I'm, don't, don't cry at my grave. I'm not here. You know, I'm, I'm the wind. I'm the, I'm the trees. I'm all the things that you know. I'm an energy. That's just a personal interpretation. Yeah, that, 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 that's that's really nice to hear, and I I, I like I like your version of it. Yeah, <laughs> it really fills my heart with so much warmth. That when when I read that, so many people relate to that. Some people even writing me that this song changed their life or saved their life, and this is something that I would never dreamed about. You know, being a boy in Eastern Europe, in Eastern Ukraine, just sitting there playing my guitar that my father taught me. Um, I'm trying not to think about it too often because it can get you into strange place. Oh, this is interesting. Konstantin Sapios, mm -hmm. which I'm assuming is a Greek name. Yeah, 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 I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Give us a reason why did they choose a Mazonakis song for cover? <laughs> this, is, this is a really funny one. Uh, 
when we were in Greece, uh, second or third time, something like this, I started playing this Mazanakis cover uh, before I'm the Mountain because it's basically the same, um, the same tempo, you know, and the chords are a bit similar. But the thing is that uh, this this is this guy called Georgios Mazanakis, mm -hmm. and his song called Savato, which goes something like Katedrati to Savato. Eurovision level kind of uh, art, you yeah, know? Yeah. And it's not really considered something serious or something. But for some reason, you could hear the song basically from every window from every cafe, from every car that's passing by. I don't know for what reason. Yeah. Probably because this sort of melos, this sort of melody, this sort of feeling, the atmosphere, the, the, the whole thing really speaks to Slavic soul, you know, like the Greek soul, mm. and the Slavic soul, the Bunkel soul. This is basically very, very much connected. <laughs> and for some reason I started playing it, and now it's a sort of tradition, like the last time we played in Greece, I think, <laughs> mm. when, when it was time for On the Mountain this, in the set list, they knew that it's going to be preceded by Savato, which is translated Saturday. Ah, so okay. it's all about the Saturday when, when he's singing about that he drinks every Saturday because his girl left him. Yeah, ah, okay. So, what more Slavic can be than this? <laughs> like, yeah. Drink because your girl left you. Yeah. This is this is just beautiful. <laughs> every Saturday, by the way. Every Saturday. It happens yeah. every Saturday. <laughs> yeah, today as well. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we know what to do later. Yeah. And I, I, I asked him like because I wasn't sure because of how he asked it. It sounded like why did they cover that? Like almost like negative. So I asked like because you like it or because you don't. And then of course I like it. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. People dig that.